What's your tax shelter strategy and you know which accounts, 401k, IRA, HSA, are you trying to fund? And which of them have an income limit? Meaning if you make too much, you're, on, you're not able to fund them. I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Your financial life is made up of six different areas, and the big idea is you need to make financial decisions, especially as you're trying to reach financial goals, and make decisions that bring synergy to those six areas, where you're looking at how will this decision impact these other areas and help help improve as many areas as possible. And tax planning along with, you know, so, so sort of the question, which tax shelter should you be funding? Which account should you be saving up into for retirement? Now that's obviously cash flow, but it's definitely tax, tax planning, okay? And then yes, it's investment planning. How do you structure your investments? And estate planning, what happens with those dollars and how are they structured if you pass away? And then of course, retirement planning. So that alone right there, that's, that's five of the six areas of financial planning that you need to look at when making this decision. But your tax shelter strategy, is one of the most important financial decisions you're gonna make in your life. So should you be funding your 401k or should you be funding an IRA or a Roth? Should you do a Roth 401k? Should you be using an HSA? Should you be shoeboxing your HSA? Should you be saving up in a 529 plan or educational uh, Coverdell, uh, educational IRA? Those are your tax shelters and more. And you determining which of those make the most sense for you and which of them should you be funding and by how much, one of the biggest financial decisions you're gonna make in your life. Now, as you're pursuing that, you're gonna work with your CFP who's doing comprehensive financial planning. They're gonna help guide you in this. But which of these tax shelters do you need to be aware that there's an income limit to? And meaning if you make too much money, or and I, and I know there's just a lot of that going around from the administration. So re, have, have a lot of taxable income. That's what I would rather say, because you could make a certain amount of salary, but then have you know rental income, then have dividends, then have capital gains, whatever, that all kind of could add up and could that could mean you're not able to contribute to some of these tax shelters that you want to. So which of them have income limits? First is the Roth IRA. That's right. I've done some videos about this before, but it, you could have too much income. You could have too much adjusted gross income, modified adjusted gross income, such that you're unable to contribute to a Roth IRA. And we see this a lot where someone who's been funding their Roth IRA and they're doing so automatically and then over time their income just drifts up or maybe they get married and now both incomes are together or maybe they had some other investment, there was a capital gain and they didn't realize it, but all of a sudden their income is above the threshold but they've still been contributing to a Roth IRA. Now they've made excess contributions, there's penalties and there's big problems. So your Roth IRA is one that has an income limit, okay? Um, for single filers, if you make below, call it 144,000, it's a little bit of a phase out there, but 144, 150, somewhere in there, that's where you're, you're gonna start being limited on contributing to the Roth, okay? If you make below that, then you're fine, you can contribute to the Roth, but if you make more than that, there's a certain window where your, your contributions to the Roth are limited, and then once you get over that, you can't do any Roth contributions. Married, it's around 200,000, okay? Just over 200,000, married filing jointly. If married filing separately, no Roth, basically. $10,000 10, is, is, uh, is it. So essentially no Roth contribution, married filing separately um, because of that, that, the way you have your income structured. So married filing jointly though, like I said, just over 200,000 if your uh, adjusted gross income is below that you're fine if it's above that can't contribute to the Roth okay what about IRA IRA also has an income limit but not if you don't have a 401k available okay that's double <laughs> double negative so if you don't have a 401k or retirement plan available to you through work you can make as much money as you want and still fund an IRA this is a this is a big question if you're single in, in spouse, you know, you're not married, whatever, um, then, and you don't have a 401k available or a retirement plan available, you can contribute to an IRA and deduct it no matter what your income is. If you have a 401k available to you at work, whether, even if you're not using it, then there is an income limit on whether you can contribute and deduct an IRA contribution. 
up to about $68,000 if you've got a, if, if that's your income, you're single and you've got a 401k available to you at work, about $68,000. If your income above that, you can't deduct your IRA contribution. Married's about 110,000 in that range um, and you have a 401k available, then uh, if your income's above that, then you can't contribute and deduct uh, an IRA contribution. Now, what if you're married? Okay, what if you're married and you don't have a 401k available to you, but your spouse does? Well, then it goes actually to that Roth IRA income limit. So yes, you would be limited if you don't have a 401k available, but your spouse does, then you would be limited. You've got an income limit of approximately $200,000, okay? If your income, of adjusted gross income is below that, then you can contribute to an IRA and deduct it. Um, but if your income's above that, then even though you don't have a 401k available to you, your spouse does, and therefore you're not able to contribute to an IRA and deduct it. If your income's above these levels, guys, for the IRA, you can contribute to it, you just can't deduct it. And if you already have pre-tax money in your IRA, then that makes things very, very complicated. If you don't have pre-tax money in your, your IRA and you don't deduct it, well then you likely can convert that money right over to your Roth IRA and, and it works, uh, that's called the backdoor Roth. All right, so those are the biggies that have sort of income limits. What other tax shelters are out there that maybe don't have an income limit? Number one, the HSA. The HSA is gonna work similarly to an IRA, except with one distinct advantage over the, the IRA. And that is when you contribute money to your HSA, it's pre-tax, just like the IRA or pre-tax 401k contributions. But then if you withdraw the money from the HSA towards a qualified medical expense, it's not taxable not taxable at, at all. So, so fantastic. That's why, one of the reasons why the HSA, if you have a qualifying high deductible health plan and you can contribute to an HSA, could be a huge tax strategy for you to fund that thing. So no income limit. You can make a half million dollars and still fund an HSA. The limit is, do you have a qualifying high deductible health plan? Another one not quite as sweet is the 529 plan. The 529 plan is essentially the Roth IRA, but for college, meaning you don't get a tax benefit on the contribution unless your state offers one. The growth is tax deferred, and then the growth would come out tax free if used for a qualifying college expense, okay? That, no income, no income limit there, right? And so if your state offers a tax benefit, they may have an income limit on there. Most don't, um, but no, no income limit on funding the 529 plan. And then saving the most common for last, and that's the 401k. Is there an income limit in order to contribute and deduct a 401k or contribute it into the Roth side of the 401k? There is not. There is not. You can make as much as you want and still contribute to the 401k. There's one caveat though. If your 401k plan, or you likely it, it does, if your 401k plan is not a safe harbor 401k plan, then it's gonna have to go through some, a, 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 what's called top heavy kind of testing, all right? Which means if you are considered a highly compensated employee, and this video is not to get into all that minutia, all those details, but if you're considered a high, highly compensated employee, then you are limited on how much you can contribute to the 401k as just 2% above the average contribution of those employees that are not highly comped. So this is a way of, of anti-discrimination testing for the 401k to make sure that the folks that make a lot of money can't contribute, aren't, aren't receiving a bigger tax benefit than those that maybe don't make a lot of money, okay? Safe Harbor 401k plans, which is a lot of companies are, are shifting to this. You might still have this, this top heavy testing if you have after-tax contributions, but if you have a Safe Harbor 401k, regardless of what you make, you should, you should be able to contribute up to that maximum, uh, that, that annual maximum for the 401k. Um, if you don't have a Safe Harbor 401k, then you may still have this, this limitation where you're only able to contribute 2% higher than the average contribution of those that are not highly comp. So 401k shouldn't have an income limit to it, but some of them do if they're considered top heavy. So what's your tax shelter strategy? And as your income grows, or maybe as you have other income, dividends, capital gains, whatever, does that change what your tax shelter strategy is? Again, this is one of the most important financial decisions you can make because I want you to save as much money on taxes as possible while you're saving up for retirement and be, be aware of that so you're paying the least amount of tax over your lifetime. Work with your certified financial planner on that. Get a plan together for the right tax shelter strategy. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. 
That's Corhorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.